1 Samuel 16, 7 said, But the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. I feel like as the world is evolving, more and more people pay attention to the outside appearance of someone, like not even just physical appearance, but what they say in public, what they do in public, how they treat others in public, and how they act in public. Instead of knowing if they act the same way with close friends, family, relatives, and not even with family, but by themselves. As a Christian, we should make it a habit to point everything we do to Christ. Even if nobody's watching, God always is. You can never escape him. Like if someone was just watching you, watching everything you do, hearing everything you say, listening to every word that comes out of your mouth, would that be pointing them to Christ and would that be glorifying God? Basically, the main point is, would it be a good example of what a Christian is? Listen, God wants to have a relationship with you so bad. He sent his one and only son to die for you. And I know we hear that all the time. We overlook it. We're just like, oh yeah, I hear that all the time. That's just normal. No, that's not normal. That love is not normal. That love comes from one person and one person only. God. He sent his son, his only son, to go through the most painful death possibly known to man. Knowing that we might never love him in return. Could you imagine... As Jesus is walking a mile and a half, carrying a 180 pound cross up a hill after being tortured to the point where he doesn't even look human anymore, just dropped the cross and said, if you haven't learned by now, you never will. No, because that's not the kind of God he is. That's not what his love does. His love chases us over and over and over. We're the only people who pull away from him. He's chasing after us while we're running different directions. And he's like, what are you doing? Come back. I saved you. Have I not told you I love you? Like, why are we not living for that every day? What kind of love is that? What kind of love would keep chasing us after we have rejected him an infinite amount of times? Four times that I could count. I've ran in different directions, far away from him, many times, and he still shows me grace every time. He shows me forgiveness every time. We should show our love and respect to Jesus by surrendering everything we have to him. By putting it all back on him because that's what Jesus came to do. The only person getting further away from him is you. It's you. He's staying right where he's at and even coming closer to you to try to reach you. But you're just running away. You're getting further away. Do you know how upset that makes him? Guys, what would happen if right now we stopped everything we were doing and just surrendered our lives to Christ? Like I know we've said we have before, but let's not let's not do it just for another time. Let's do it forever. Let's this this can be the last time. This time you can make the decision in your heart and in your mind to live for Christ. What would happen if we stopped living like the world and started living for Christ? What if we started worshiping God right now? Grades are gonna get you into heaven. Heaven should not be what life is about. Even if we weren't going to go to heaven, wouldn't it be worth it to live for someone who died for you? Wouldn't it be worth it to just live a peaceful life? Like with God being your God. Tell me, tell me that wouldn't be worth it. It would. But there is heaven. That's our reward. But God doesn't owe us anything. So just think, he's given us more than we could ever imagine. More than we could ever ask for. Because he loves us that much. You shouldn't want to have a relationship with God just so you can get into heaven. And if you do get a relationship with God, even just ultimately thinking about getting into heaven and that just being it, like, you will find that heaven isn't what it's all about. Living for Christ is what it's about. Now, yeah, grades aren't going to get you into heaven, but you shouldn't try to fail everything. You should still try your best, because the Bible says in everything you do, you unto the Lord. So still try your best, but if you don't make an A, it's going to be okay. Now, as you can so easily tell, yes, I am targeting grades because we are teenagers. Teenagers get caught up in worldly things, things of the earth, not in heaven. What's gonna matter in heaven? You're not gonna take a grade book to heaven with you. You're not gonna take like a sports certificate to heaven with you. So yes, I'm targeting these topics that teenagers go through because that's where the pressure is most. Um, and conversations with other teenagers, you can tell they're like, oh, so like, what's, what are your academics like? Are you more academic or sporty? No, that's not gonna matter in like 10 years from now. So just think, it's fine. We should be living for Christ, not for sports, not for grades, not for school, not for recognition, not for people, but for Christ, the one who matters.